Okay, it looks like we're live, everyone. Hello, welcome to What a Good Dog Live. My name is Terry, and I'm going to be essentially <laughs> our operator for this. We have Mary here joining us, who is going to be answering all of your questions. So let's go to Mary now and say hello. Hi, Mary. Hey, Terry. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining. This is a new field for me, certainly. Terry's an expert here. Um, so have, have patience with me. I, I'm learning this. <laughs> Okay, let's get right to it. Uh, I have an 11 week old Bernadoodle, Oliver. We take him outside off leash because we have a large backyard. When it's time to go inside, I can't get him. It's a game of catch me if you can. Please help. Mary, what should well, we do? Well, Oliver, <laughs> how cute he must be at 10 weeks. So puppies are like little information magnets. They're learning all the time. And Oliver has learned that uh, he can go outside and it's free range and lots of fun for him. So uh, one of the things that we do want to do, even though you don't, you have a large property, is to uh, use a long line, a long line. So it's not heavy, but it is um, light and non-restrictive and you know, you can get about 20 feet so that he can cruise around. Uh, but when you need him to come, you will be able to call him and make it happen. So we want to also have very, very high value treats. And when he comes in and he gets his treats, then he gets to go out again and do more sniffing, whatever he'd like to do. So these are some of the things that you can do as well. Use a word for inside and make inside a great place to go. So again, I will take a handful of the puppy's kibble away from its food and just use it. And I'll put scatter shot all over the kitchen floor. So when they come in the door, if it's the kitchen or the hall, you can immediately have a wonderful reward for Oliver. So he's running around, scarfing up all the treats. And then you're going to say, that was great. Let's go back outside again. So back outside he goes, more snipping. And then you can come back inside reward. Use your best rewards outside for coming when called. And also practice it with family members. So you can kind of have a ping pong thing going. And again, you can take some of his lunch, some of his breakfast, some of his supper, mix in some high value treats, give a little baggie to every member of the family. And in the beginning, you start at close distance and everybody does a call. And when he comes, you feed him the cookies. And when the next person calls, he gets the cookies again. And so you can have a little ping pong, a little round robin, and make coming when called really fun and motivational for him because the outdoors with spring now popping up is exciting and stimulating. And every time he goes out, there's more sense and more excitement garnered from your yard. So let's try some of those things. And on our next chat, you can let us know how you make out. Okay, so that was a great one. Uh, we'd love to see your questions still coming in. It looks like we have some people commenting live. Mary Carolyn and Diane would both like to say hello to you. Well, hello, Carolyn, and hello, Diane. Okay, and let's move on to our next question. So this one actually comes from a dog, and he says, any tips on how to keep me entertained while the humans are now working from home during the day? Yes, so this is the challenge, is keeping ourselves, our children, and our dogs entertained um, in times of confinement for safety. So what we're going to do is actually start to put some things up on the website where there will be activities that you can do with your dog 
um, throughout the day. So there'll be enrichment activities. So we're going to put a first one up um, right after this, I believe. Terry's going to load it up. And you'll be able to go to that. And then we will continue to post games that our trainers have done uh, to um, help get you and your dogs through this challenging time. Uh, in the meantime, we will, you think of things, we'll be showing you scent games, we'll be showing you, you know, again, different activities. So we do find it, um, there'll be massage, there'll be, uh, you can make creative activities in your house by putting things in different places that they're not used to, okay? Use, use their meal time as find games, okay? Don't just be feeding them out of the bowl. And you can do these games outside and inside because dogs are hunters and foragers by design. So we will we'll take these natural instincts and use them for um, entertainment as well as food earning. And this helps them pass the time. And also is fun for you to engage in in different activities like this. So stay tuned. We will be giving you videos of these activities that you can do with your dog. Fantastic, fantastic stuff. Okay, we have another one that just came in. Uh, I'm worried about my dog gaining weight during this time period that we're stuck inside. How can I keep my dog strong and lean indoors? Great question. Okay, so uh, use your stairs as an activity and you can also um, do hide and seek uh, in the house. If you have a safe uh, area outside, a fenced in area, you can do it outside as well. If you by any chance had a treadmill, you certainly can teach your dog to use the treadmill. We have many clients whose dogs love the treadmill and in fact if the time of day comes when they think they should have been on the treadmill and they haven't been they actually load themselves onto the treadmill and, and give a little demonstration that they're ready to go so if you by any chance had a treadmill that is a great thing to do the other thing also is to use the finding the food so don't just give it out of the bowl and again, we'll have activities that you can, you can implement um, to help with this and give you a little demonstration on that. But, but finding the food around the house, upstairs, uh, in closets, um, in different areas of the house they're not used to going to, this is uh, great for helping dogs to stay mentally engaged and physically toned and be sure that you're not adding additional food. So if you want to use um, these games, use the dog food and then you can add in a few treats, but you can delete about 10% of their food ration uh, if you're using treats, okay? Fantastic answer. Okay, we have another one. This is from Carolyn Haley. And Carolyn writes, Sugar is diabetic and had developed cataracts. She is seven and has been diabetic since August. When could we have cataracts removed? Well, that is a question that you really need to take up with your veterinarian. Um, and I'm afraid given our current situation that sugar may have to wait a little while for that surgery. But um, if you are going to a specialist, the specialist will be able to help you with that on the timing. In the meantime, again, uh, sugar can use her nose, even though she might not be able to see well. So to keep sugar uh, engaged and feeling positive about life and not depressed because she can't see, use the scent games. You know, hide her food around. In the beginning, start with a very limited area so that she gains confidence in the game. 
and confidence in, that using her nose will bring a successful result. So that's what I would do while you're waiting for your surgery uh, for sugar. And in the meantime, you can also be thinking about starting with that small area. And as she does gain confidence, expand the area a little bit. If that feels uncomfortable, just move to another small area and let her learn to hunt around in that area. And again, you can play some of the scenting games with sugar that we'll be putting up. She doesn't need to see for those. She can just use her nose. How hopefully that will be fun for her. Okay, just a reminder, everybody, we are live on Facebook, so you can add in questions. That last question just came in in our comment section. So please head to the comments right underneath the live video to let us know what you think. Um, we have another question ready for you. How do I socialize a new puppy when there aren't puppy classes and we are distancing ourselves? This is a very challenging question. It is extremely difficult and we do have to get creative. But we have to utilize what we have and you can do this by Again, we will show you in a video some things that you can do, okay? But things like wearing costumes, wear a hat, pull out a Halloween costume. Um, so you look different. <laughs> Use different things in the house to put in places that the puppy isn't familiar with, okay? If you have a pair of crutches in the house, use those. If you by any chance happen to have a wheelchair. In other words, we're trying with what you can find in your house and around your yard or in your garage, things that the puppy hasn't experienced but gives a concept, okay? So um, crutches are something that you can hop around on. It'll look a little bit different Again, being pushed on a chair or if you have a scooter, um, a wheelbarrow is another good one. You can also put the puppy in the wheelbarrow, making it be sure the puppy's secure and safe. This is my friend Caper, who's come in to say hello. Um, making sure the puppy's safe and secure, so you want to put a nice, comfortable, non-stick rug in the bottom of the wheelbarrow and lots of treats. You might not move the wheelbarrow the first couple of times that you put the puppy in there, but you might just give treats and then take the puppy out. You also should have a second person to make sure that the puppy is secure. Um, get the puppy used to a bike going up and down the driveway. Get the puppy used to your car moving up and down the driveway. Way. You can put the puppy in the car and go for a drive and get them used to that. You can take trash barrels and turn them into feeding dispensers, okay, so that they're not scary. You can turn them on their side and roll them around and keep the puppy at a distance in the beginning and feed them lots of treats. So it's getting creative with what's around the house. You also want to introduce them to sounds that they might not be getting used to so because they're not out on the street. So drop things, obviously, from far away in the beginning and on soft surfaces because what we want to do is to have them want to come up and investigate the item, whatever that might be, okay? And then it becomes a treat dispenser. So you can do that. You can... Uh, use a hula hoop. Teach them to walk through the hula hoop. Never force your puppy to approach any of these novel items. Just if they feel worried about it, use distance as their friend and get them used to it as far away. They, from far away. You should be using the vacuum cleaner so they're used to that. Um, you can play catch in the house uh, or outside on your driveway. It's just a question of getting them used to a variety of different things. 
and going in all rooms of the house. Fantastic. Okay, this one might be a little inside, but uh, Heidi Clayton has written, any thoughts on keeping Ichiban out of trouble during quarantine? Heidi Clayton, that Ichiban is a unique character, and the only thing that I can suggest for you is to get a tank of horseshoe crabs. Ichiban lives in Cape May and loves to go hunting after the horseshoe crabs. So Heidi, my suggestion to you, you get a tank and you fill it with horseshoe crabs and she gets horseshoe crab watching three to four times a day, only if she's a very good girl. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Uh, I'm in the middle of typing one right now, but I'll just pose it to you. Uh, I have four different animals in my house right now, and usually it's only one or two. What do I do? <laughs> what do you do? Okay, well, what <laughs> I need to know what types of animals, and maybe I can speak to one or two of them, but not all of them. So what types of animals do you have? And it sounds like you need to put additions on your house, which would, you know, might take up some time during this quarantine uh, for each of them to have their own playroom. So anyway, really seriously, if you have four different animals, whatever they're inclined to want to do as far as activities go, I would make sure that you're giving each their own time throughout the day to do their preferred activities and keep moving it around and that'll keep you busy and them busy. Okay, and like I said everybody, we are live right now, so please feel free to add in any of your questions. Uh, Gail, for some reason, is talking about play in the bathtub. Does that mean anything on your end? Gail is talking about playing in the bathtub. Is Gail playing with a rubber duck? Or has she got, if it's the Gail that I think it could be, has she got one of her dogs in the bathtub? And if the dog is in the bathtub, I surely do hope it's on a non-slide rubber mat. And are they bobbing for apples or treats or how much water is in the bathtub? What's going on there, Gail? <laughs> okay, we got another one from Holly. She asks, we just got our puppy from Heidi and she's about 13 and a half weeks old. We also have five strictly indoor cats. Right now we're keeping them strictly separated but trying to work on some slow introductions from a distance. Any other suggestions? Yeah, when the puppy sees the cats, it's got to be a positive thing for the puppy and for the cats. So for the cats to feel comfortable, they have to know that they can get to a safe haven. So that, that is the most important thing from the cat's perspective. Got to be able to get safe and got to be able to come and meet this new infiltrator in their house on their terms, not on the puppy's terms. So I would be keeping a leash on the puppy in the house. And when the cats come around, I would just let it happen. And if it gets a little too exciting, you've got the leash on. I also am a believer because um, I think it usually works out well for the cats to define the rules. Um, and, and usually they're benevolent and a 13 week old puppy is going to be respectful. So safety, use treats for the, for the puppy in the presence of the cats when the puppy's demonstrating calmness. And you can lure that in the beginning so that you're supporting this. And then the puppy ultimately may just offer that behavior. But the cats have to be able to get to a safe zone. 
uh, and so the puppy I'm sure is on limited house access anyway, so shouldn't be too much of an issue. Okay, we have heard back from Gail. She says, socialize puppies to play in bathtub before bathing. Oh, Gailie, well, that's a nice one. Yes, they should play in the bathtub um, as long as that uh, non-skid non mat is in there. Um, personally, I like the shower. Uh, because that I can control a little better with the water and the door, and I don't want them to be struggling to try to get out. But if you only have a bathtub, yes, by all means, they can learn to play in the bathtub, and then you can put in an inch of water. That can be another session, and then two inches of water and favorite toys and great treats, and pretty soon you're giving them a bath in the bathtub and they will come to love Okay. It. And we have one from Ann O'Shea. She says, Millie is now eight months old. How much is too much exercise slash walking? Hi, Ann. We know adorable Millie, um, eight months old. The, so the growth plates are not closed yet. And you do need to be cautious about over exercising until those growth plates are closed so um eight months old if if she's pretty lean I, I i sort of am a believer of let the puppy tell you i wouldn't push it and i wouldn't encourage any strenuous exercise so you can do a little bit of ball play at this age but not too much. I wouldn't do any tossing of a frisbee and having them leap up in the air to catch it. None of that. Uh, so, um, but free play, periodic free play without getting overtired and not putting too much stress on those joints at this age. Okay. Um, we now have from Nance Davidson. Maggie is a grass grazer. Is that okay or normal? Dogs will graze the grass. They will particularly like to graze the grasses in the spring. And uh, in the holistic world, we look at the spring and the fall as the time for a cleanse. And so the dogs actually, when the couch grasses come up, will seek them out uh, if they have access to them and and eat them and will then in fact throw up. And this is part of a um, normal cleansing process. If anybody has read the works of Juliet de Barclay Levy, um, she was a huge advocate and used to grow her own couch grasses so that her dogs had easy access to them. So. A lot of times they're looking for nutrients and minerals that come from the grasses, especially in the spring. That being said, it can become habitual. And a lot of our soil, unfortunately, today is depleted. And sometimes they are looking for trace minerals, uh, trace minerals that aren't as um, easily available through their food product. So you might do some things like um, my holistic vet recommends carrot peelings and you just take an organic carrot and you give them the long strips uh, and they can have as many of them as they want. Um, another thing is maybe some green beans lightly steamed, some lightly steamed broccoli might uh, satisfy the craving for the grass. So you could try those things if you felt like it. Okay, this is, uh, this is kind of a funny one, but probably not funny for the person dealing with it. 
My 100-pound Alaskan Malamute will not stop farting. This is a problem with me trapped inside. <laughs> that is a problem. That is a definite problem. Well, um, I, I, would, I would suggest investigating so, uh, what you, with your veterinarian, uh, the food product that you're using and maybe look for a little change in that food product, uh, different brand, different protein source, uh, that along the lines of that. But yes, that, that's, that's definitely a problem. But I would consult with your veterinarian on the food and see if you could do a, a change, a little change up and if that doesn't help. All right, next up, I have a show dog and we are way off schedule. I'm assuming that's training schedule. Any tips? Um, I, I would, I would want to know, are you showing in breed or uh, obedience or scent work or agility or w what the topic is? You know, certainly, you can do things at home in the confirmation ring if that's where you're showing. You can um, just practice and have audience, a little audience with your family and have them do clapping and move your dog up and down the hallway and up and down the driveway and have people honk a horn. You know, you really want to expose them to all the sounds that they might hear at a show. Okay. And finally, thank you very much, everybody. So we think we are uh, going to wrap up here. Um, that's it for today, but we're going to do lots and lots of more of these. And uh, we invite you to keep asking questions. This video will probably still exist, so you can always comment there. Or you can just let us know. Send us a message. Let us know the kind of answers that you want to hear. In the meantime, we are going to be releasing content for you so that you can kind of continue your journey and know that What A Good Dog is still here uh, trying to do the best we can with giving you knowledge that you need to know about your dog. I'm going to put Mary up one more time for a goodbye. So say goodbye, Mary. Thank you so much for joining us. And we hope that you're all staying safe and take care. And we wish you um, good health and, and, and safety, please. So uh, if there's anything that we can do to help you with you and your dog, we're, 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 we're here and we want to be helpful. So let us know and stay in touch. Thank you.